Okay, I'm going to show you how to import a face gen head into Outfit Studio for editing and refining as a more workable alternative to the Race Menu Sculpt tab. Though this information is um, courtesy of Trip the Rift. She's the one who told me about it. Um, I don't know who else out there does it. This is the first time I've heard of this. So, um, thank you. And what we want first is we need to know that we're going to be importing this head into one version of Outfit Studio to correct some issues. And then we will be importing it into the current version to do the sculpture. Uh, the reason for that seems to be that Outfit Studio version 4.8, which I have installed alongside the current version, 5.7, uh, is the one that can import them without screwing them up somehow. And that's about my depth of knowledge on that. So I'm going to open 4.8, and I will be grabbing... Um, face gen head that could use some work and um, we'll show you how what what happens when we import it and how we're going to deal with that I wanted to do something to this character's head for a minute Hopefully it'll be the character. No, that's not the right one. Sorry. But what I'll do is I'm going to show you anyway. Just because this is just for demonstration purposes. And then I'll show you what um, I'm... The tools on my other head. So for this you'll see that some parts land at the bottom. And that's just how they import. I don't know the mechanics behind that. It's just how they seem to land in the workspace. And this happens in 3D all the time. Things will import into various programs. Kind of weird. So um, your mouth, the brows, we're, con we're holding down control right now. And we're selecting all those parts that we see at the bottom. The hairline. Our hair is at the top, so I want to not select. Okay, so we got all those selected. Now what we need to do is we need to enter a series of coordinates that will put those in the right place. And I have those saved right here. Now I got these just by searching online. And you can look up information, it, it looks like, um, about this. So um, I was able to get these coordinates. And I keep them in a notepad so that we can just copy them right in. So I right click on the parts, hit move, and then I like to put these close together and copy these numbers one at a time. We can see that all the parts landed right in the right place. Okay, so I did that that part just for demo purposes, and now I'm going to show you um, a head that I have in and that I'm working on, so we can look at the tools. Before we go to the other version what we will want to do with the head that we fixed is to export it back to the same same mesh or create a backup folder I think I'm just gonna make a backup real quick that's better practice until we until we know um, we 
we have what we need. So. Okay, so now we're going to open version 5.7 and we'll import. Um, you would be importing the same head that you fixed, but in this instance, I'm going to uh, probably import one that I'm actually working on. Um, I just wanted to show you that procedure in the other one uh, for getting those things in place, and that's all that is about on that other version. So, I'm going to get um, this head that I've really been fixing in here. Uh, and she was already, all of her stuff was already in place. That's why I couldn't show you with this. But, here's what I'm trying with this character. And um, I think it could be thought of as a good practice thing. Um, usually in 3D it's good to work with low poly first, so I have a high poly version of this character, but I went back and got her old high poly, uh, low poly head to do this work with before I convert the, this one here back to the high poly. So, uh, that way what will happen is you'll have a better time doing the last refinements on the high poly head because everything will mostly be in place and you'll really just be left uh, refining the last of these little nubs that will still occur you know our points will round off but um, it's so what I'm going to do so that I can see what I'm doing in this character and I do this in race menu as well as just disable all the hair and when I am fixing a head in here I want it to show the wireframe so we can go to view up here to the left hit the drop down show wireframe so we know what we're doing here and you can already see uh, you know, the massive advantage that we have in being able to get close. Um, the main tools that are useful uh, for those who haven't used Outfit Studio before, if you haven't been working with clothes and you don't know, you know, but you have worked race menu, hopefully, is you have a variety of tools that are quite similar. It's going to be expand, or well, it's increase, decrease, move, smooth and then mask and the first thing I do before I do anything is I mask the neck and what that does is it um, it's going to protect us from any inadvertent little accident that could occur where she ends up with a weird neck seam that's hard to fix we don't want to do anything like that so um, and Another one I commonly use, especially if a head's not horribly out of place and it just needs a little, few little things done, um, is this tool right here. It moves one vertex. So you can enable that and uh, tweak the little points around until you're satisfied. These aren't badly out of place anymore, but this is the only head I'm working on. But this can all be manipulated to get as round as we can get before we do the high poly conversion. And of course, Okay, and this is our mirror over here. Uh, that will mirror all your changes. So, when we're working with any of these transformation brushes, we have our brush settings. And um, these will be familiar as well. 
for those who've worked in race menu, size, strength, focus, spacing. And I mainly work with size and strength. I don't work with focus or anything a whole lot. But um, there we go. We can round out the cheeks if we wanted to. Smooth it and the smooth works better than it does in race menu, generally speaking. That's my opinion anyway. And if you need to move a whole mesh, we have a move tool over here. Like say if you're in a situation where Oh, my character's teeth are kind of too far forward and the the mouth cavity mesh is cutting through the face. We could go over here and choose the mouth and our move tool. And this tool will give you a few things to do. You've got the arrows. We'll move the whole mesh back and forth. So if something's just a wee bit off, you can just scoot it there. And there you go. And then these knobs will change the dimensions in those directions in all the coordinates x, y, and z. Okay, backing all the way out of that since she didn't need that. Okay. So I hope that gives you enough to get started on. If you have any trouble, you can ask me, of course. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait. Hang on. Before we go, uh, once you're all satisfied, you will, of course, export back to the same head. Overwrite it or make a backup. You know, make as many backups as you need to be safe. And good luck.